Hey guys, MattCraft.derp here, and welcome back to... Yes, I just, I really want to do that. A dad dating simulator. So, uh, last time we did Craig's Day, it's been two weeks for me since then. Um, we gotta do Damien's second date, man. We gotta. Welcome. It's the last second date we have to do. We've done Craig's second date. We've done this guy's second date. We've done this fucker's second date. We've done Robert's second date. <laughs> technically first, but also technically second. We've done Joseph's second date. We've done Hugo's second date. Uh, we've done Damien's first date, so we're gonna do a second date. Woo, we're almost done, and I bet we're getting a scene at the end of this. It's gonna be so cool to be like, congratulations, you're one step ahead from the true ending, or something like that crap. I had a lot of fun hanging out with Damien the other day. I wonder what he's up to. I open up Dad book and start writing him a message when Amanda walks in the door. Dad, you got a letter. It's from Damien, isn't it? Of course it is. Of course he would write a letter with a pen and quill. Oh, is it from Grandma? No, it's from Damien. Of course it is. Whoa, can I see it? Amanda hands me a piece of old parchment, folded into an envelope and sealed with purple wax. Damn, this dude goes all out. I pry off the seal and unfold the letter. In the most beautiful calligraphy, the letter reads, Dearest Donnan, I hope you'll find my continued correspondence endearing, rather than trying. One can only hope that m my use of the slower, more traditional form of communication will showcase my sincere and earnest sentiment that I greatly enjoyed our time together. I write this, I write this hastily under the warm embrace of excitement, fearful that I may misstep and, misstep and speak towards something unwelcome. For now I hope that you might forgive my boldness. I will simply say that your company has been greatly occupied my thoughts, while the afternoon may have been derailed by forces unforeseen. Your companionship helped a great deal, not only in the discipline of my child, but in the morale of my spirit, and for that I thank you. That said, Donnan, if you'll allow me, it would mean the world to me if I could enjoy more of your time. Perhaps a trip to the cinema followed by a moonlit stroll would be to your taste. I eagerly await your response. With great respect, D. Bloodmarch. <laughs> I love how long that was. Amanda and I both look up from the letter. Wow. He's good. So you gonna catch a movie with him? Yeah, I better message him on Dad Book and let him know. Amanda slaps my laptop shut. I have to write him a letter. You have to write him back. A real letter. But my handwriting looks like two toddlers fighting over a crayon. Dad, you have to. He wrote you a letter. That's so cool. Will you help me? I need to class this up. Father, I was made for this. Here's what you do. Find tickets to a show that you two will like, then enclose them in the letter. Oh, that's classy. Amanda and I hop onto my laptop and pursue show peruse showtimes. Um, he doesn't seem like a romantic comedy kind of guy. Oh, here's one. Vampire Crusade 2? Evil never dies. I don't know, that sounds kind of stupid. Actually, it's a critically acclaimed exploration into the NUE of the NUI, I don't know, of existence. It re really turns the vampire trope on its head. Really? Nah, there's just lots of blood and vampire titties. <laughs> well, let's roll the dice. I purchase the tickets and print them out, then sit down at the table with Amanda tr to try drafting a nice letter. I start writing. Damien. I do hope that this letter finds you in good health. Hey, good morrow to you on this fine eve. I'm going, hey, Dad, I'm going to need you to get your head in the game here. <laughs> That's what we did last time. We were just like, sounds great. Uh, what's next? Uh, hey, remember when your son uh, tried to cast Mon Montiato, that kid? You've been good. I must confess my amateur control of the written word. Mm, that, that would kind of recover from the hey, but also... You been good? <laughs> Dad, he's a Victorian goth with a flair for the dramatic. Could you, I don't know, just help me help you here? <laughs> I want to keep going with the average ones. Okay, we're trucking along. Let him know how you're feeling. I think going with the average ones. <laughs> that earnest shit was pretty messed up. I did very much enjoy the adventure we found ourselves on the last meet. You find me in good spirits, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. <laughs> 
Um, I don't want to say the Ernest shit was pretty messed up, because I don't even want to bring that up. That's why I didn't say the cask of Amontillado thing last time. Uh, I did very much enjoy the adventure we found ourselves. Um, no, I'm just going to do this. Nice. Ask him to hang out already. True art takes time, Amanda. Um, while a strange turn of events, I found myself enamored at the situation at hand. Uh, like Bruegel's landscape with the fall of Icarus, I find myself in lost in your details. Let me, um, get at that. What? That's not good. I don't know. Bring it home, pops. Let me take you out. I got two tickets to the movies. <laughs> I want to say that one now. I would very much enjoy your company accompanying me to the cinema. Um, it would bring me great pleasure to escort you to the cinema. Let me take you out. Yeah, fine. That'll work. In close, you'll find two tickets to Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies, which I'm sure you will find both uh, titillating and enjo enjoyable. <laughs> titillating, of course. How do we know he's seen Vampire Crusade 1? Um, hard daps. Namaste. We'll, namaste? <laughs> we'll carry on. Uh, best wishes. And then I signed my name, my full name. Fancier that way. But he just put D Blood March, Don and Linson. Should have made up a middle name for every dad. Um, every protagonist dad. Is this okay? Amanda reads over my sloppy handwriting. <laughs> Damien, hey, you been good? Your letter found me in good spirits, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. Encounter. Well, a strange turn of events, I found myself enamored at the situation at hand. Let me take you out. I got two tickets for the movies. Enclosed, you'll find two tickets to Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies, which I'm sure you will find both titillating and enjoyable. Best wishes, Darn and Linson. You spelled his name wrong. What? Nah, just trying to keep you on your toes. Now all you have to do is seal it and put it in his mailbox. Can I seal it with tape? That's not authentic enough. I have an idea. I'll be right back. Oh god, Amanda leaves the room and returns with a candle, a lighter, and a small piece of wood. <laughs> you gotta have a wax seal. She lights the candle, which starts to burn down and form a pool of melted wax. What's that other thing? Amanda pours some of the wax onto the folded letter and expertly presses the small piece of wood into it. She lets it dry for a second and pulls the wood away, revealing... Here it is, your sigil. A little kitten with a bow on its head. Awesome. <laughs> Scrapbooking stuff always comes in clutch. Well, I guess all there is to do is deliver it to his doorstep now, huh? Oh, I thought we were getting a carrier pigeon to do it. I already called my guy. Hmm. I have a pigeon guy. Marcus has the good pigeons. <laughs> oh, goodness. Don't get your pigeons from Anthony. They're no good. How long is she going to keep this joke going on? I don't want to know if any of this is true. I really don't. Um, I head outside and walk over to Damien's house. I slip the lighter into the slot in his door and go back home. Mission accomplished. Now we play the waiting game. I hope I don't get shadows or hearts from him or any or anything from the quality of my letter. Because uh, it was just a mixed bag. Uh, the night finally rolls around where I'm supposed to meet with Damien. The next day he had left another beautifully crafted letter thanking me for mine and, and agreeing to the evening. Amanda helps me pick out a nice outfit and I show up to the theater a bit early. It's a, it's a chilly night and the theater is kind of crowded, but it's still nice. How do you do? Gee, oh, they're playing this like a horror film. Oh my god. Um, I jump at the sound of his voice and turn around to see Damien right behind me. You almost gave me a heart attack. How long were you there for? I don't know. I just walked up. My apologies for frightening you. Was that thunder? Is it gonna rain soon? I didn't hear anything. <laughs> of course you didn't. What? Oh my. What? <laughs> Regardless, the hour grows close. Shall we take our seats in the cinema? I must thank you again for purchasing our tickets. Please, allow me to repay the deed in Sour Patch Kids, or perhaps Milk Duds. Let's do it. We get in line to buy snacks. As we're waiting, I hear a familiar voice behind us. Who is it? Who could it possibly be? Oh, my dad's here. Oh, my dad's here. Oh. I turn around to find Lucian standing a few feet behind us with a gaggle of other goth kids. Lucian, how nice to see you. I didn't know you were coming to the theater. I'm glad to see you spending some quality time with your friends. Whatever, Dad. And what movie will you be attending tonight? My friends are making me see some kids' movie about talking animals. I don't really care about it. Well, I do hope you enjoy your evening. We'll be watching Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies. You watching that? Yeah, I thought Damien would enjoy it. <laughs> Good luck with that, Dad. Lucian rejoins his friends and I look over to Damien.
Good luck with what? It's nothing. My son loves to tease. It's gonna be a shit movie. It's gonna make fun of goth culture. Um, we might wait in line for a little longer and Damien buys us snacks. He seems a little nervous. I wonder what's wrong. It's the movie. Damien and I take our seats and settle in for previews. Glancing at him, I can see that he's sweating profusely and gripping his armrest. Um, is everything okay? Everything is perfectly fine. I'm so, uh, excited for this film. I'm a devoted patron of the arts, especially the scary arts. The scarier the art, the better. Do you have a favorite horror movie? I... Of course I have a favorite horror movie. Mine is Halloween Town. Terrifying. He doesn't watch films. Oh, interesting. That's odd. I don't seem to remember Halloween Town being that scary. I would have expected him to bring up some uh, some sort of strange foreign horror film that I've never heard of. Damien's knuckles are turning white. It looks like he's about to rip the armrest off. Wait a second. Damien, are you... afraid of horror movies? You must be joking! I love horror movies! He, he's afraid of horror movies. Good thing this is a lot more comedy, apparently, according to... Amanda. That's that's a very interesting character trait. A goth, vampire-esque dude being afraid of horror movies. That's really cool. Jesus! His voice clips are freaking loud. Damien screams. I apologize. I was thinking about something far scarier than this movie, which is not scary at all. We settle in as the film starts. I offer Damien some licorice and he takes one. I take note of how much his hands are shaking. The title flashes oh, the title flashes across the screen in bloody letters. Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies. A pale man with long silver hair, glittering red eyes, and well-oiled abs sits up in a coffin. Awaken my coven. Or coven, whatever. Um, two more vampires slide across, uh, slide the tops of their stone coffins onto the floor. Brother, is it time? Yes, husband, but also mortal enemy, it is time. I don't know what I'm doing. The three look at each other and then to the camera. For the vampire crusade! I'm gonna stop. Uh, this rules. The trio of vampire flies off into the night as foreboding organ music plays in the distance. I somehow get lost in the movie. As dumb as it sounded, it's actually a pretty fun <laughs> flick. We get it. We get to a tense moment of the movie where Romulus Trueblood uh, sits at a truce meeting with the general of the human army, whose wife Romulus has fallen in love with. Romulus, it is good to finally meet you. General, I agree. It is good to finally blood you. Romulus leaps out and slashes the general's throat. Blood spatters all over everything, including the camera. Damien screams again, reflexively grasping my hand. I immediately blush, forgetting about any vampires or blood or vampiric oh, blood. My. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Damien retracts his hand and places it back in his lap. I was writing a novel in my head about blood magic, and I got into an extremely scary section. Damien goes back to quietly stressing out over the movie. It's kind of cute that he won't admit he's afraid of it. I wish he would hold my hand again. <laughs> of course you do. Maybe I could do something to try to make him feel more comfortable. I've got it. I'll do what all dads do best. Talk during the movie. Uh, tell a dad joke. Point out the plot hole. Ask what's happening. I don't want him to focus on the movie. I don't want to... Let's just not focus on the movie. Let's tell a dad joke. Uh, where does the dog go when it loses its tail? Where? To the retail store. I yell that last bit a really too a bit too loud for a crowded movie theater, but I can see a smile form on Damien's face. Good one, Donnan. The rest of the movie goes by relatively smoothly, with only a few whimpers from Damien. Maybe he would have liked the romantic comedy better. We get to the final scene of the movie, where Romulus, Bad Blood, and the General's wife embrace each other in his crypt. It appears that the true vampire crusade was the vampire crusade in our hearts, our cold, unbeating hearts. Romulus and the general's wife begin making out hard. The film fades to black and the end appears on the screen, but then it hard cuts to Demetrius and his rival lover, lover Carmela, who watched the two from afar. Oh no, twist ending. 
Our bloodline has been pure for a thousand years. Romulus has betrayed us by loving a human woman. It will only be a short time before the next Vampire Crusade 3 evil must die again. <laughs> more thunder, more ominous organs. The movie fades out again, and a bloody question mark now accompanies the end. <laughs> that sounds so lame, it hurts. Uh, Damien and I walk out of the movie theater amidst throngs of chattering moviegoers. He's a little more pale than I remember, but otherwise he survived the encounter. He even seems kind of invigorated. What an interesting film. While the premise admittedly struck me as pedestrian, I was intrigued by its harrowing love story and great attention to detail in regards to vampiric love. Yeah, those are pretty good. A lot more vampire titties than I thought there would be. Come, the night is young. Let's take a stroll. If he actually turns into, like, a vampire... Uh, Damien is making a point of not telling me where he's taking me. It's, it's a graveyard. Uh, still, I'm enjoying the walk into the cool night air. Being alone here with Damien is a lot better than being in a crowded theater. Lovely night, isn't it? As lovely as the company, yes. He thinks I'm lovely. Damn. Okay. Here comes the smooth response. Thanks. Cool. Okay. Cool. I... Thanks, let's be grateful. Uh, no problem. <laughs> He's straight up flirting and crushed it. <laughs> we both stand there feeling a little awkward. I sure am one smooth operator. <laughs> Are you getting a little hungry? We can maybe stop off and grab something to eat. Worry not, friend. I have a plan. I love when people say I've instead of I have in like... Like, I have something, not just, like, I've done this, or whatever. Uh, we turn the corner and are greeted by the gates of a cemetery? What? Compl like, this wasn't completely expected? As Are we going in there? A little bit of Victorian flavor, Don, and trust me. I'm a bit nervous, but Damien hasn't... Jesus, the music. Hasn't led me wrong yet. I follow his lead as we walk back into the cemetery. Statues of angels stare down at us as we follow a path through the faded tombstones. This is the Talkbox song! From After Fishing. At least I think it is, I don't know. Could just be weird synthesizers. Uh, as we crest a small hill, we get a beautiful view of the city. The night lights sparkle around us. I gotta hand it to him. For being in a cemetery, this is strangely... romantic. Picnicking in graveyards is an old Victorian tradition, an appropriate finish to an evening after a vampire movie, wouldn't you say? With a flourish, Damien produces a blanket and a picnic basket. We're having a picnic in a cemetery! Wait, where, where were you hiding that? <laughs> Under my cloak? Oh, right. <laughs> Damien unfolds the blanket and we both sit down, gazing out at the city lights. He produces a bottle of red wine and a fine selection of cheeses. Aw, oh, Hugo would love this, no wonder you two connected earlier. Uh, in the Victorian era, there were no public art galleries, parks, or botanical gardens to speak of. Once rural graveyards became a more popular alternative to church burials, they became the only place that people could see beautiful plant life and find sculptures. That makes sense. This is pretty nice. I have a question, though. How are you so okay with being in a graveyard, but you had trouble handling a scary movie? I... I wasn't. He sighs deeply. Okay, yes, I was extremely scared by that movie. I was not writing a book about blood magic in my head. I just... have never been good at those. I just feel as if because of how I look and act, people expect me to love horror films, so I must play the part. Truth be told, I don't know if I have the constitution for them at times. Damien, I'm so sorry. If I had known, I would have suggested another movie. It's quite alright. I actually did find myself enjoying this one, thanks to your help. Thanks to the dad joke. Graveyards, however. I think there's something rather beautiful about death. Cemeteries are traditionally built away from cities, away from the realm of the living, and it keeps us rather separated from it. To acknowledge death and become comfortable with it, I think, gives us a certain intimate knowledge of ourselves. To sit amongst generations of those who came before us, to be truly alive in the midst of so much death, brings me, om brings me great comfort. Death helps me appreciate life, to save every second. You know, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get super real for a minute. Um, I was actually in a car accident uh, last week. Actually, it would have been two weeks ago when this is going up. Um, and, like, it was such an unexpected thing. I was stopped and this lady just plowed into the back of me. And, like, if, if anything had gone differently, if she had been going faster, if the airbag had gone off... If, like, my car wasn't as large as it was, 
I could have lost my life there. And like ever since then, for the past few weeks, I've been so grateful for life. Just like to have it. And I've been like cherishing every second and rethinking what I want to do this year with my life. And like this, this whole thing about savoring every second of life, like it's connecting with me so much. Like I'm kind of happy I didn't, uh, I'm kind of happy I haven't played this game in two weeks because like... Maybe if I had done this, I wouldn't have had that experience already, and I wouldn't be able to connect this nearly as well, so, like, yeah, I can, I can super relate to this, savoring every second of life. Like, Damien, Damien, you're a cool dude, you know? We sit and enjoy our food and wine. I don't feel scared anymore. Never thought I'd be comfortable sitting alone in a graveyard at night, but I actually feel very peaceful. Suddenly, it doesn't seem like we're alone. Off in the distance, I see a shadowy figure in the trees. It's Robert. Print calling it now, it's Robert. What is that? I'm not sure. What is this music? It got so quiet. It noticed us. I'm paralyzed with fear as it begins lumbering slowly towards us. It takes shape, its shape taking a more animal form, more feral. I look to Damien for help, but he's just as afraid and transfixed as I am. Is this supposed to be a, fam uh, a werewolf? Or, like, give that imitation. I want to scream, but it's stuck in my throat. The creature is getting slower, moving closer, get, uh, moving faster. Jesus! Woof! It's Maxwell. Oh. It's a dog. As it fin- Oh, it's not Maxwell. Jesus, it dies! As it finally comes into the, li the light, the friendliest, dumbest little Boston Terrier I've ever seen, uh, pulls its owner towards us. The dog trots over to Damien and sniffs his hands. Damien looks ecstatic. He ruffles the dog's fur happily. What a beautiful dog! Hey. We both look up, not expecting to see Brian? Thanks. It is Robert! Dude! I totally killed that! And he has a dog! That's awesome! I bet he would get along with Brian. Um. Robert! What are you doing out here on this lovely evening? Hunting cryptids. What? Didn't he say one of his hobbies was grave digging? What? <laughs> I didn't know you had a dog. This isn't my dog. I found her wandering in the street. I put a leash on her, and now we're walking around this graveyard together. I love Robert so much. He's great. Hunting cryptids. <laughs> Damien and I share a look. May I give her a treat? Sure. Wouldn't give her cheese, though. Not to worry. Damien reaches into the depths of his cloaks and produces a small dog treat. What else is he keeping in there? The dog laps up the treat and crunches away, whacking its tail furiously. Damien continues to smooth down her fur. Thanks. My absolute pleasure. Damien shakes the dog's paw. Lovely to meet you, my friend. May our paths cross again. Robert and his question mark dog disappear into the darkness again. Uh, Damien stares after them. I didn't know you liked dogs. Victorians loved dogs, actually. Most Victorian women of high fashion would always be accompanied by a small dog, such as a terrier or a, or a Maltese. Or Maltese. Maltese. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Jesus me. Um, I uh, think big dogs are nice, too. Yeah, man. Dogs are cool. I do believe we've had enough excitement for one night. What say we make our way home? Damien hops to his feet and extends a hand to help me up. I gladly take it as my knees aren't what they used to be. Uh, he packs up his picnic basket and leads us out of the graveyard. As we begin to walk home... Oh, actually, you know what? I get why... Like, I get where his picnic blanket came from, but where did the basket come from? How do you hide that in a cloak? Like, it's just a cape. Like, Jesus. Uh, I gladly take it... Um, as my knees aren't what they used to be. He packs up his picnic basket and leaves us out of the graveyard as we begin to walk home. I take one last look at the cemetery. It really is beautiful. <laughs> like a proper gentleman, Damien walks me to my doorstep. The talk box music again, Jesus. Thank you ever so kindly for your company tonight. Damien, it was my pleasure. Donnan, if you'll allow me, it would bring me great joy to offer you a token of my affection. Damien reaches into his cloak and pulls out a folded, monogrammed handkerchief. He presses it into my hand. Wow, thank you, Damien. I will use this to dry my tears from those I've lost. For those I've lost, I can't wait to sneeze on this. I'm gonna wave this at passing ships. I want to say all these things, but I can't wait to sneeze on this. You'll be practicing good hygiene with style and grace. 
I knew that was a decent answer. Damien shuffled his feet. I just want to say that it's rare to find someone like you. Someone who's open to my eccentric, uh, eccentric, eccentricities, that's the word. It's nice to feel so accepted. Um, thank you. Damien gives my hand a quick squeeze. Damien blushes and hastily retracts his hand. Uh, I must take my leave. Good night. Before I can say anything else, he's gone. Huh. I unlock the door and step inside. Like a whirlwind, Amanda runs from the window and plops down on the couch, trying to look nonchalant. Hey, Dad, what's up? Were you... watching me from the window? No, I was just, uh... Okay, yes. How was the movie? <laughs> Lots of vampire titties. Told you. But, as it turns out, Damien is sca- Wait, Amanda doesn't need to know that. I'll keep it between me and Damien. Sc scary cool. Yeah, he's so cool it's scary. Nice save, Darren. <laughs> Did you know that graveyards used to be a place to throw parties? That's not at all what he's saying. I think I'm misremembering that. <laughs> wow, that's pretty punk. Also, we saw a dog. Definitely thought it was a werewolf for a minute, though. Exactly, of course we did. How can you be so sure it wasn't a werewolf? How can you be so sure I'm not a werewolf? <laughs> my hair just becomes fur. It just falls onto my body. I have enough of it for it. And how can I be so sure you're not a were werewolf? Amanda's eyes narrow. I don't trust you. <laughs> Nor I you. We make intense... I'm sorry, this is really funny. I'm, I'm trying to contain my laughter, but I... Okay. We... <laughs> sorry. We make... <laughs> This only happened one other time in the game where I couldn't control my laughter. And it was really early on. It might have been in the Minecraft plays, I'm sorry. <laughs> we make intense, wary eye contact for a second. Hmm. This, this game, I just want to say, this game brings me so much joy. It just makes me so happy. Not only for the hilarious dialogue, but just being able to relate to it. Like, I, I know you can hear it in my voice, because even I can hear it in my voice. I'm just having... I'm having the best time, like... Ugh, it's, it's just, it's such a fun game for the dialogue. Like, yes, it's a game about dads dating dads. It's like, but that doesn't mean it's like exclusively for gay people. Or it's not even exclusively for people who watch Game Grumps. It's not even just like Game Grumps humor. It's like, it's, 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 it's relatable. It's funny. It's just a fun experience. And, like, God, I don't know. I feel like anyone could enjoy this game. Unless you're, like, some sort of, like, useless scumbag. Uh, anyways, I'm calling it for the night. Don't stay up too late, will ya? I'll try not to howl at the moon past midnight. And now I feel like we're gonna have a scene after this. Date complete. You know, I feel... Oju-sama? What is that? oju -sama? I don't fucking know. Simply a majestic evening. So, that was the last second date. So I feel like we're gonna get a scene after this that will like trigger the best ending. Welcome. You no, there's no, there's nothing for doing all the second dates with all the dads before you do the third date. Really? Like maybe there will be a true ending scene, but like. Wow, that's such a letdown. Unless there really is something at the end, but you know what? We're not going to find out until next time on Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator, when I'll be doing the third and final date with Hugo, because Matt broke my heart, and I want to do the third date with Hugo, and I'm recording that immediately after this, because I need to get these out this week, so I need to get them recorded, and I still have two episodes I want to do after that one. And I don't know when I'm going to have time to record them, because I record these, like, very late at night when no one else is awake, so nobody hears the out-of-context dialogue. But now I'm not going to get the chance to do that, because this, this is the last night I have to stay up until next weekend. So. And I kind of want all of these to be out before next weekend. So, you know what? I'm Minecraft the Turpin. I'll see you guys next time in what is the finale, but technically not the finale. Bye bye